childhood was filled with endless stories about the great hero and my great uncle, Roald Wallenberg. Here he is together with my grandmother, who is also honoring us with her presence today. Roel was, for those of you who don't know him, one of the big heroes of the Holocaust. He saved tens of thousands of Jews, mainly using his personal skills, his ability to inspire and persuade, his logistical skills, his creativity, and of course, his courage. He's a great example of that one person can make a difference. And when I heard the stories about him as a child, I nervously asked myself, would I have the same moral courage as he did? Would I be able to distinguish good from evil as clearly as he did? And perhaps most importantly, if I did, would I be willing to sacrifice my comfort, and in his case, safety, to work for the cause of humanity? These are hard questions. And it's obvious, unfortunately, that most of us do not say yes when faced with them. Yet we need more Roald Wallenbergs. We need more people who stand up and work for humanity. We face enormous challenges today. We heard testimonies of racism and xenophobia today. Um, we have poverty. We have... Um, other human rights violations, trafficking, modern day slavery, and also other challenges such as climate change. And the only way we can solve these challenges if we all step up and become a difference maker. And I gave this quite a bit of thought. How do we make everyone a difference maker? Challenging task, challenging task, and uh, especially challenging to answer in 10 minutes. Uh, but uh, I'll have a go, we'll see how it goes. Uh, first, it's obvious that we don't need more information. We have plenty of information about the problems. We also have plenty of information about the solutions, but we don't mix them. So it's not a question of information, it's a question of motivation. We need to be motivated to solve the problems. So let's look at the most commonly used motivators in society. Money and fame. I mean, it's certainly used um, in, the, in the all of the business world and most of society. But I don't know. Do you think it will solve the problems we face today? Thank you for that interaction there. Um, Personally, I don't uh, feel that this may be the mo biggest motivation because once we have enough money, we will stop. So maybe we need some negative motivation, such as punishment. What do you think? Will this get us working? No, I, I, think, I think it will, actually. I, you know, if, if I had that kind of boss screaming at me, I would probably work, um, but only as long as he was around. Uh, then, I would, then I would stop. Uh, I wouldn't go the extra mile. To find real motivation, we need to find a positive motivation inside ourselves. We need to find passion. And passion comes from our values. So, um, and values, and this actually made me rewrite my speech today when, it, when, when I realized this, because values is, of course, the um, inner compass that I was searching for as a child. And passion uh, is, of course, that will to make a difference. So it's a clear link between the two of them. And when I talk about values, I mean inner values. Uh, because what I thought as a child, and what I thought probably only a few years ago when I thought of values, I thought about my family values, my traditions, um, 
That's not what I'm talking about, or, or company values, laws in society. Uh, I'm talking about the, the inner compass here. We need to start identifying our inner compass because we will not be passionate about the external values unless they coincide with our inner values. So we need to start identifying our own values and then find the cause that is in line with those values. And one common denominator for people that start identifying their values is that extrinsic factors such as money, power, and status becomes less important. Instead, you are more eager to focus on what's really important in life, such as uh, passion, compassion, love, joy, purpose, and by doing so, find a more authentic meaning in your life. So in other words, we are more eager to um, work for the greater society, uh, for ourselves, uh, and for, for our loved ones, but also for uh, beyond ourselves, if we focus on our values. So in order to create or get, maybe not create, but to inspire and get more Roel Wallenbergs, my family started the Roel Wallenberg Academy 10 years ago. We um, offer leadership education to high school students uh, and inspire them to become leaders. And we help them identify their values and then identify a course that is in line with their values that they feel passionate about. Now we're also taking the next step uh, and doing a trainer program where we'll train trainers so that they can go out to schools and train others. But of course, I wouldn't be standing here if I only wanted to focus on the high school students. I want you to do this too. So now we have the dinner tonight. So maybe not tonight, but when you come home um, tomorrow, log on to our partner's website, www.values.selfleaders.com. There you'll find 75 common values in the Western world. Print it underline all values that you think are important to you, and then go back and circle the seven values, plus minus two, that you think are most important in your life. And then see how you can live that value in your everyday life. At work, um, with your family, and with your friends. Focus on one value each week. And try to, to really live that value. And by doing this, we'll find a more authentic meaning in our life. But more than that, uh, research also shows that we are happier and more motivated when we do this. And then if we have another um, hour, if you have another hour, not here, um, you can sit down with a friend because our values are based on our experiences. So sit down with a friend and tell a five-minute story, a real story, from your life when that value was important to you and do that for all values and then listen to your friend for 30 minutes and do that without interrupting which is a challenge in itself. Um, so I'll sum up by sharing one of my values with you and that is vitality and it's really important to me uh, with vitality and it was obvious to me this uh, spring when I was working real hard, I was working in a law firm I was uh, president of a of, um, social entrepreneurship network. I was involved with the academy uh, and with other role Wallenberg activities. And I was working uh, day and night and weekends and all the time. And one Friday afternoon when my uh, friends sat down and had an uh, after work beer, I just felt to myself, oh, I'm too tired. I can't take work another week. So I um, decided to take a day off. I turned off my cell phone, first time in a year probably. Uh, I turned off my computer also, first time in a year. And I decided to take a four hour walk in the forest. And when I came home, I read a, a book that was of no importance, just for my own pleasure. And I started energy, felt that energy coming back to me. And, um, and I needed that energy, of course, to work for the greater good. So even though that was value just for myself, uh, that is also something I can use to, to contribute to others, I hope.
So, I'm optimistic that we can solve the challenges we face today. But we need to start with ourselves and identify our own values. If we do that, we will not only be happier and more motivated, but we will also be on the path of solving some of the worst problems we face today. Thank you.